Hey guys, Aaron here, director at Small Voice Films. Thanks for stopping by and checking out this video, which is all about editing a micro budget feature. Now I'm just about to start editing this particular feature film called Thorns and Thistles at the End of the World, which happens to be the second film that I've directed. Uh, it'll be the fourth feature that I've edited. Um, so I thought I'd do a series of videos just to show you my process, how I go about organizing files, footage, cutting scenes, and all that kind of thing. So firstly, to get into it, the most important thing when beginning, particularly a feature, but also applies to short films, is organizing all your files and folders correctly. You don't want to get to, you know, down the track um, of the edit, you've got to picture lock or something like that. You're sending files here, there, and everywhere to visual effects artists, sound designers, colorists, and things. And all of a sudden, media is not linking up, they're missing files because you haven't kept them in a uniform filing system, and some of the files are here, there, and everywhere on your computer. So, this process should begin as you're shooting and your data wrangler on set. In my case, the data wrangler was me for this film, so I was able to organize everything from the beginning. What I have here is I have my main editing drive. Uh, and I've got a folder with all the location sound that you can see there, so from days one through to 21, every single track is in there. I have a raw footage folder, which again has days one to 21, plus a couple of little extra shoots that I went out to get shots of the sunset and things like that. All the footage is all categorized like that, raw footage, location sound. And then I have my post-production folder. Now this is where I'm gonna put all the files relating to post-production, whether it be sound, music, visual effects, uh, editing project files, and that kind of thing. As you can see at the moment, all I have in here is my Premiere Pro project file. Um, that's because I'm only just embarking on the editing. But as we get further along, I'm gonna add, and I might as well do it right now, just add some folders in such as temp music, uh, new folder, sound effects, new folder, visual effects. Basically, you want to try and categorize everything in a few simple folders that's going to help you navigate everything. It's an easy system, so whenever you're pulling in a new asset for your edit, you're going to put it in the appropriate folder. Uh, if you ever need to transfer all the stuff to another computer or to another post-production house or anything like that. Everything on the hard drive, you just give them the one hard drive, everything is there, organized, ready to go. So I may create a folder here called Collaboration Exports. So in that, I might export XML file for the colorist or OMF files for the sound designer. And I might have another folder here, Draft so putting in there draft exports of either the entire film or specific scenes if I want to send off to people to get feedback, things like that. Um, and you may, even may have a folder in here for trailer and promos if you ever want to you know, do something like that. So everything is categorized, um, easy to find in sound effects. Now you may not want to call this sound effects, you might just want to call it sound post in general. And then within sound post, you have a folder that says sound effects. You might even throw your temp music in, in there. Essentially, it's just about organizing everything so you know where things are, it's easy to find. It doesn't have to be the system that I use, just you know something that works for you, that's easy for you to remember, and you know where everything is gonna go. Uh, one of the things I also do, um, obviously, all of this gets backed up onto a, a, another hard drive. And I also always put my project file into Dropbox as well. As you can see here, I've got my Dropbox folder, uh, Thorns, and I've backed it up in there. Now let's flick over to Premiere Pro. As you can see in here, I've got my project set up. It's called Thorns and Thistles. Uh, so what I do is, obviously I bring in all the raw footage. Now in here, I've got all the sound in here as well. What I also do, the way I like to begin my edit, when I do that first assemble edit, I like to put each scene individually. So I have, right down, we've got 92 scenes in the film. So I have an individual sequence for each scene, just to make it easier for me to sync up footage and things like that. And then I edit scenes individually, and then I will create 
once I've gone through and edited each scene, I'll create a new sequence called Assemble Edit, and then I'll, in order, just throw all those scenes in. Now, you'll notice that, so scene 56, 61 here, and 69, 72, 78, they're all in the one sequence. Now, this is because it is essentially the one scene broken up by a few flashbacks. So we shot all of those scenes all at once. Um, so scene 69, 72, 78, even though it's gonna be broken up by some of these flashback scenes here, I've put them all in the same sequence together. You know, you can put five scenes together if you want, one scene, whatever, whatever works for you. So I create all those sequences and then I'm ready to get started pulling in the footage. So first thing I do is I go to day one all right, so I know that on day one, obviously if you've got your continuity notes with you or your shooting schedule, you'll know what scenes you shot on each day. So I usually have that just on my desk, off to the side, just so I know what I did on that day, where I'm going. So on day one here, you can see, we shot scene four and scene three on day one. So what I do here is I just pull down all of the scene three footage, which I've already done, uh, and then pull down all the audio as well. I'll show you in one that I haven't done just yet. Let's go to day two. So we go scene, we shot scene 10, 11, 12, and 13 on day two. So I'm gonna grab, I may have actually already done scene 10. Let's pull it down. Okay, so I have. So. Let me just see what one that goes up to. That goes up to shot 620 on scene 10. Let me just delete those. What I do is I grab this. Now I know it goes up to scene 620 because I already did it. I'm just gonna select all of those. And I'm just gonna pull them all in. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the audio. Let's get rid of that one, that's a false take. If you've had a good sound recorder, so they're gonna label everything correctly. So I know that that's all my scene 10 audio. There. If you're on a bigger budget project, you'll probably have an assistant editor doing all this kind of stuff for you while you're even shooting. So as an editor, you get into the edit suite, everything's organized, everything's synced up for you. Unfortunately, when you're working in lower budget stuff, you gotta do it all yourself. So uh, if I go back to scene three, and then what you do, once you've got each set of audio, each audio track underneath the appropriate vision, you need to synchronize it all. So that's as simple as, I've already done this one. In Premiere Pro, it's really easy. They have a synchronize button. So you just right click on that and say synchronize, audio, okay. Give it a second, boom, that one's synchronized. And then to keep it nice and uniform, you can trim it up there. I'm not sure what happened with the second audio track on that take, but that's all right. So just select those ones here and synchronize. And as you will see, just give it a second to analyze the tracks. That's all synchronized up. I can grab this, make it just nice and neat there and trim that up there. Now, there may be times where, depending on what's going on in your scene, um, how much noise is on set, that the automatic synchronization function in Premiere may not work. In that instance, it's just a simple case of manually syncing it yourself, which is really easy to do if you've had somebody slating each scene. So you just bring it down here. I can see that here on the timeline, that's where the video track has the clap. This is where the clap is here on the vision, on the audio, sorry. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull that there that's nicely synced up. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do that for every other scene as well. Uh, again, time consuming process, 
but something that needs to be done. I have edited things in the past where the director may have started editing himself or I've taken over projects that have begun editing and they haven't synced up the footage to begin with and it is an absolute nightmare to try and then sync it up after they've already started editing. If you don't have that clapper in your frame and you don't have the sound of the clapper on the audio, if it's already cut, it's just it just makes things more difficult for you. So make sure you go through every scene to begin with and sync everything up. Makes life so much easier. Uh, just a little tip for people shooting on set as well. Before you hit roll on the camera, make sure the slate is in the frame. Really easy so we can go along when we're editing and you can see the first shot of each take, the clapper is there so you instantly know what shot you're on. Okay, makes it really easy to sync up. You don't have to shuffle through footage trying to find out what shot is this. Um, I've done, again, I've edited a feature before where they didn't have the slate in the frame at the start of every shot and sometimes they'd be rolling the camera for two minutes before they'd throw the slate in and start actually recording the take. And so I'm sitting here trying to sync things up, trying to find out what shot I'm looking at, scanning through footage. It's a waste of time. So make sure as a camera operator, you've got that slate in the frame before you hit roll on the camera. So when you get to the editing suite, the editor knows instantly what shot they're looking at. Similarly, if you're sound recording on set, make sure you're labeling all your takes as what they are. So I know as I look here, I know that this is 10A take one, 10A take two, 10A take three, 10A take four. When it comes to syncing up the footage, it makes the job so much easier. So I'll just go through with you here quickly. So what I'm doing, so I know that's, that's a false take there. I can tell just by the length of it. So that's gonna be shot two. Shot three will be there. Shot four will be that one. This will be shot five. So essentially, I'm just going through and I'm making sure every audio file and every visual track matches up, okay? So some people may choose to just go straight to their continuity sheets, work out which takes they liked and only sync those ones up. I prefer to do everything uh, just because I don't know which shots I'm actually gonna end up using. Even though I may have said I like this shot and this shot as we're shooting, I may get to the edit and those shots may not work for whatever reason. So I just like to have my individual sequences all set up with all the footage nicely synced up, then if I ever want to come back to that scene, it's there. So as you can see here, looks like I have an extra shot at the end. Let's have a look. So, looks like every shot has some audio there, but I've got some extra at the end. What I'm hoping is that this is just the Atmos that the sound recorders recorded on the day, but we'll find out in a second. Wild Sound Footsteps. There you go. So that's Wild Sound Footsteps, so I know that I don't need to worry about syncing that up. And then the process begins where I just go through each clip like this. Okay, so for whatever reason, it doesn't like syncing up that shot. So what I need to do is manually sync it, as I suggested. So I approximately get it there. All right, that's the actual clap there. There we go, synced up. Then I just move along to the next one. Let's see if that will synchronize. It doesn't like it either. So I know that here on the timeline, if I just, I'll just expand it for you. 
I can see that spike there, that's gonna be the clap. Now I know I was shooting this film as well, being so micro budget, I was doing everything. Uh, I know that I didn't roll camera until right when we we're about to clap, so I know that this is gonna be the clap right towards the start of the clip. So I'm just gonna move that along to approximately there. I'll expand it. And that's it, synced up. All right, and then you just go through the next one. Let's try and synchronize it automatically. Still doesn't like it. You can always... Mark. As you can see, the camera audio has a lot of uh, noise in it. That is probably why it's not syncing up automatically at this stage. Sometimes it'll work for you, sometimes it won't. But you essentially just go through the entire film doing this. That one synced up, that's excellent. So try the next shot. That one didn't do it, so I'll go through and sync that one up manually in a moment. And I'll do the same with the entire film. So 92 scenes, I'm gonna go through each one, sync up every single shot, make sure everything is ready for me to start cutting the film. It's a tedious, somewhat time consuming process, but once you get the hang of it, you can actually get through it quite quickly uh, and it's gonna make things so much easier down the track. As I said, once everything's synced up, I'm gonna start cutting the film. Usually I'll cut in order. Occasionally if there's a difficult scene, I might go, oh, I'll just come back to that one afterwards. I'll do a few easier scenes that I'm inspired by at the moment and, and cut those. So there you have it. So that's basically how I set up the project to begin with. Pull in all the sound, sync it all up, making sure I'm ready to start editing with everything ready to go. So as I said, couple of tips, make sure that first frame does have the slate in it or the end frame if you're doing a tower slate, make sure the last frame has got the slate in it. Um, that way it makes it you know, a lot easier for us to sync up once we get to the edit suite. And then once it's all synced up, you're ready to start cutting. And that's where the fun begins. Once I get to that stage, I'll jump back on and do another video so you can see a little bit about my process, how I go about cutting each scene and, and the thought process that goes behind it. But for now, I gotta get syncing up the rest of this film. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with the latest videos we post. Mm -hmm.